when we're doing our gardening, this is it. This is what it's all about right here, is the soil. Everything and anything we can do to help improve that soil is going to be very important. <clears throat> this is the corn patch you saw in the previous videos. It's later in the season, much later in the season now. The, uh, of course, the, what's residual left of the corn was mowed down. It's given some time to, uh, to decay a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to come along and we're going to disc this into the soil and such. So we're going to put back all of the plant residues as possible. Now we cut some of these stalks and use them for animal feed and such like that. But uh, <clears throat> the remainders and especially the root systems and such were left in the place. All right, As they're decaying into the ground, they're helping the soil out and such as well too. Uh, and same with the crimson clover we put in here as a cover crop and such. This was just recently mowed and now we're going to come through with a, a, a disc, uh, disc harrow and we're going to disc this into the soil. So we're going to return back all of, this, all of this material here into the soil. And this will in turn break down into the soil and help the soil out quite a bit. Anytime we can return any organic matter in back into the soil, it's going to help the soil considerably. Even just this cut grass and things like that in a larger area, uh, like a pasture area or something like that, will help uh, again when it's disc into the soil and such it will help uh, it will help to uh, to enrich the soil to bring some organic matter into the soil and as it decays you know of course if you have earthworms and such as well too it's going to give them something to uh, to eat and kind of uh, fuel themselves off of and in the same token uh, the earthworms digging around in there and and you know doing what they do and everything you know pooping everywhere is going to further enrich the soil also <clears throat> Now here's some soil that been doing this too for several years now and you can see there's a little bit more tilth to it than uh, than that other soil. That other area was a was more or less a newer growing area we've only been using for a few years. Now then this <coughs> this has been this has been in use for a long period of time and a lot of crop residues and even we've brought in uh, truckloads of cow manure and things like that uh, you know and compost and such like that into the soil everything you can do to to enrich the soil is important to do now as as we've mentioned before we're not uh, our philosophy is we're not necessarily against using commercial fertilizers here that good stand of corn came partly because of a lot of uh, use of uh, ammonium nitrate fertilizer and things like that uh, but that's not to say we go around just spreading DDT on the soil you know there's this uh, common theory with organic farmers that if you're not you know just just you know not using anything at all but but uh, poop and such that you know you're you're just a bad guy and all that stuff and we've we've gotten a lot of negative comments and a lot of smart aleck things from uh, you know a lot of folks that just you know oh you're you're hurting the environment you know because you're putting a little lime on your soil well that's just ridiculous and uh, any decent ag agent or any serious organic gardener that's doing a, a ton of stuff is going to realize that you have to do things like that to uh, to uh, amend your soil uh, Steve Solomon in his book gardening when it counts his uh, <clears throat> little home concoction uh, fertilizer mix which is reported to be very well very excellent one of the big ingredients is lime in that um, and especially in soils down here in uh, the southern part of the country and things like that uh, typically your starter soils here are, are going to be fairly low uh, you know pH and if you don't lime them you're, you're not gonna not gonna see the uh, types of increases that you're normally gonna see you're not gonna have that uh, that uh, wider range of planting where you can plant so much different stuff Show in another part of the video as well is a soil test for a new area we're fixing to open up. And what we'll do is we'll show you the area uh, and we'll show you the actual soil test that we got back from uh, a state lab. Um, and it, basically it'll give you some recommendations, you know, show you the importance, number one, of a soil test. If you just assume that, okay, here you got, uh, <clears throat> you know, new patch of land, all I need to do is... Uh, till it in and throw some cow poop in there, bada bing, I'm good to go. It doesn't work like that. Uh, <clears throat> you know, it's, uh, it, you know, some of your trace elements and things like that, if they're not there, it's, it's really going to affect your, uh, your plant growth and, and such like that. Also, if your pH isn't correct, uh, you know, your pH has to be at a level that the plant can use. If not, what's going to happen is it's going to actually prohibit some, the intake of some of the nutrients and the, uh, the important things that the, uh, that the plants need. 
So we're going to look at that in another part of the video as well too. But I just wanted to show you this crop residue and such. One of the things we, we try to do every season is try to add back or do something to the soil every season. And uh, we don't claim to be farmers or anything like that. And we definitely don't claim to be organic gardeners. But uh, it's been working out for us is, is uh, we just add back something every year to every patch. And doing that, even if it's just <clears throat> a couple of big piles of compost and things like that, crop residues, you know, maybe liming every couple of years, things like that. All this stuff enriches the soil. You don't necessarily have to leave it in a pile for a year and things like that, okay? If you've ever, you know, if you've ever done that, you'll make a, a huge pile four foot high when the end result of it after, you know, six or eight months is just a small pile that ain't even half the size of a, of a wheelbarrow and such. So, you know, this is, that's, again, that's great for a couple of raised beds and, you know, some little cutesy stuff in the backyard. But if you're going to be growing on a scale to where you can really grow, you know, most of the food that you, uh, that you eat, you're going to need to bring in stuff from outside sources. Here's a good example right here. <clears throat> We had a hard time getting any uh, commercial chicken manure this year. What we ended up doing is we ended up finding a couple hundred bags of, uh, of organic compost and organic manure uh, that a Walmart was closing out. So we brought over a truck and trailer and just got basically a couple pallets of this stuff. Okay, <clears throat> is it the most ideal thing? No, probably not. But again, with just uh, rabbits and chickens and such like that, unless you have a serious amount of large animals, i.e., you know, uh, a herd of cows or a whole, whole boatload of goats and such like that, you're just, you're going to have to bring in stuff from off your homestead or off your farm to enrich your soil. Um, you know, when we do the rabbit um, series and such here starting in a, in a few weeks, you'll see they really, they really don't produce that much manure guys uh, and cleaning out the chicken pen you know a couple times a year it's not 